Hey guys, what's up? Today we're gonna to talk about the most important thing when it comes to processing in Photoshop. And of course, that's coffee. Okay, but no really. We're gonna talk about an awesome tool in Photoshop. It's called Color Range. And you can call it a, a selection tool, an option, a feature. Um, but we're gonna, we're gonna walk through what it is and how you can actually use it. It's a really, really amazing way to create selections um, based on the luminosity of an image. So the highlights, shadows, midtones, or the colors in an image. So red, blue, etc. So let's get into Photoshop. Let's check out the tool. And I think you guys will really enjoy this one. All right, now that we're in Photoshop, let's check out color range. Now I picked this image because I think it's a good example to use with the color range feature. We have, um, you know, a clear color magenta purple happening with the flowers in the foreground. We also have some blown out or close to blown out highlights in the sky. So it, it, it'll be a good example for us to look at, you know, how we can use the color range feature to target luminosity, but also color. So first things first, uh, if you go up to select, here is the option for color range, okay? So you can come up here and uh, you just click on here and there's some other selection options, but we'll click on color range and we're gonna get this dialog box that pops out. Now we're gonna get uh, some different options that we can pick and choose. So we're just gonna walk through kind of everything we can do within the color range interface uh, before we kind of look at making adjustments. So the first thing we need to do is start at this select option. So if we click the drop down here, we have basically three um, groups of options. So there's, there's sampled colors, which we'll come back to. Uh, let's start here. So here we can choose various colors and they're based on what colors are happening in the image. So, you know, I could click through all these and we have a preview box here so we can see the selection that's being generated from whatever I choose. So, you know, not, not a lot of reds in the scene. Like I said, I'm, I'm guessing there's a lot of magenta, right? We see that in the flowers here. So if I would select that, you can see that I'm getting this really nice selection here that focuses on the fireweed, these, these flowers in the foreground and midground. So this will work really well if I wanted to pick an adjustment or, or make an adjustment that specifically targeted these flowers. Now, if I click the drop down again, I also have luminosity options. So let's start with highlights. I can select highlights. And now I have two options that kind of expand here. I have what's called fuzziness, which is a percentage. And then I have range. So fuzziness, I almost always leave this at the higher end. You'll see, we can see the, you know, the option we choose here reflected in our preview, but as I move it more to the left, and let me just adjust the range, we'll come back to range. But you can see as I move fuzziness to the left, we get a very, very pixelated selection. And that's not gonna work very well if we wanna make some seamless adjustment, like bring the highlights down, you know, darken the brightness. We want something uh, that has really nice feathering and a good transition between the areas we're affecting and the areas we are not. So that's why I usually you know, work with fuzziness at a high level. You can see now we have a nice transition, right? Now range works like this. Um, in terms of highlights, at the far end here, so at range around zero, uh, Photoshop is gonna treat the entire image as being a highlight. You can see the selection is pure white. So basically everything is being selected. Now as I move this more and more to the right, you can see we have a more restricted, a more a uh, target adjustment to the highlights. And if I would push this all the way to the max at 255, now only the brightest parts of an image uh, are being selected. So you can see, you know, if I wanted to make an adjustment, whether it's, you know, curves adjustment, hue saturation adjustment, if I wanted to make some adjustment to only affect the highlights, I mean, this is it took one second, you know, to select highlights and then adjust these sliders. It's very quick. And I know luminosity masks at all the, the you know, the, the, they're popular, it's what everyone uses, but I actually think that, you know, working here in color range, I mean, you can create a very similar mask and you could say it's even more custom than a luminosity mask in, in just a couple of clicks. 
So we can go down to uh, midtones. We have the same thing, fuzziness here, and then we can use these uh, two sliders. This black one will determine kind of the uh, the the darker range of our midtones, and then the brighter range here. But I just like to. I don't think too much about the specifics. I kind of just uh, you know play with these sliders back and forth until I get something, uh, get a selection that is what I'm after. You know, it it reflects what I'm trying to do. So if I'm trying to, you know, affect the flowers in the mountain, well, this is a pretty good selection that'll get me there, or at least can use this as a starting point. I can do the same thing for shadows and works the same. You know, I can adjust fuzziness and then I can adjust the range. Now, at uh, the high end of the range, at 255, again, everything will be selected. So if I move this all the way to the left, now only uh, the darkest parts of the image are being selected. So usually when you're working with highlights and shadows, you want this range to be all the way or close to the left end. When you're working with highlights, you want range to be all the way or close to the right end. Now let's come back to sampled colors. This is actually one of my uh, favorite things about color range. So it, it, it says sampled colors here, but what Photoshop is gonna do is give me this color picker and I can select anything in the image. So yeah, I can select a color, but I can also select a luminosity. You know, I could, I could select highlights, I could select shadows, I can do whatever I want. So let's just start with the flowers here. Let's say I want to create a custom selection that I can use as a mask to make an adjustment to the flower. So I'm just gonna click here and look at it. It's, you know, and I can just, maybe that, that first click wasn't exactly what I wanted in terms of that, that selection here. I can just click different parts of the image and wherever I click, you know, that's gonna be reflected here. And then I have that fuzziness and range slider. So now, you know, I can make, I can, I can pick this color or the flower. We've already got a really good selection uh, generated here. And now I can adjust the fuzziness to make the feathering smooth. Maybe I want that, you know, I want the range really to be just where I, where I, you know, clicked on that flower. I find though a larger range usually works better with the sampled color options. So really, really cool. And I can do the same thing. Let's say I want to adjust something with the highlights. I can just click up here, come in here, adjust the fuzziness, adjust the range. You know, maybe I really just want it targeted on the, on the, the brightest areas here. So just an awesome, awesome way to kind of make any type of selection you want based on what's going on in your image. Now, one thing that really helps is, um, let's come back to, the, let's grab our color picker here and let's just pick, again, pick a color or just pick somewhere in the flower here and I'll just left click. Now, if I wanna to add to this selection, I can hold down shift on my keyboard and I can click around different parts of the image. You can see that's gonna be added to what is selected. Now, if I hold down Alt on a PC or Option on a Mac, I can also click to subtract colors or, again, luminosity, whatever. You know, whatever you're trying to select, you can remove or add to using that Shift and the Alt Option key. Now, I try to keep it as simple as possible, so I usually don't add to or subtract from the selection. I'll just I'll do what we uh, you know what I first showed you. So let's just say we want to make an adjustment to these flowers. I'll just left click here. I'm just gonna adjust maybe the range. And again, I like to just move these sliders and just see what happens. You know, can is there a way I can refine this selection, make it a little bit better? So let's say that looks good. Now I'll just click OK. And you can see the marching ants. We now have an active selection. So if I go over to something like the curves adjustment layer, you can see with that active selection, it's been automatically applied as a mask to this curves layer. And now if I you know, make an adjustment, you know, maybe I'll just do a basic S curve here. You know, if, now if I make an adjustment and I do you know, before and after, you can see I'm just targeting the flowers. And uh, I can, let's say I wanna use this mask again. If I hold down control or command and I left click, I can use this mask again, maybe go up to hue saturation add a little bit of saturation, you can see only the flowers are being affected. If I would do a before and an after, we've got more saturation and a little bit more contrast. 
So um, let, let's go back up into uh, color range. And, and one quick tip, let's say you're working with layers here. Uh, what you either want to do, let, let's say I've made the adjustment for colors, now I want to target the sky. Make sure your layer mask is not selected. Make sure you have like the adjustment layer here selected or you have that original pixel layer. Because what will happen, let's just walk through. If I have the uh, layer selected here and I go up to select color mask, or sorry, color range, and let's just say I'm going to choose highlights here. You'll see for some weird reason it, it overrides the mask that's happening here. You can see now instead of having the flower selected, we just have this basically a black mask. So I'll click cancel here, and if I just make sure I'm either selected on the adjustment layer icon or that original pixel layer, and now if I go up to select color range and say I go to highlights, now I can you know make a new selection. So let's say this looks pretty good. You know, I, I could do this with sampled colors and uh, I could just pick up here, pick a color and click up here or pick you know the, this section of the highlights. But I think this highlight option does a good job. And I like the fuzziness at 100% in that range all the way to the right. So I'll click OK. And we have our active selection. We could do the same thing. You know, let's say we want to just use a curves adjustment layer and to bring down, uh, you know, the, the highlight areas a little bit. So I can just grab a, a point in the middle, bring it down a little bit, and you can see it's only affecting the highlights. But you can see we do have some highlights going on here. So if I do a before and after, that looks really nice in the sky, but uh, some of our highlights down here are being affected. Now an easy way to fix that, if you if, if you want to restrict that just to the sky, this is what I do. I'll actually put this layer in a group. So with the layer selected, I'm going to hold down Control or Command G. That's going to make a group. Now I'm going to hold down Alt or Option with that group selected, and I'm going to go down to the very bottom here and click this icon. This is going to add a black layer mask. Now if I would not have been holding down Alt or Option, it would have been a normal white layer mask. And that works too, but I like to just start with a black layer mask. Black conceals, so black is going to hide everything in this layer, uh, the curves layer below in the group. Now why I'm doing this is because I want to preserve, if we go look at this, this layer mask here, I want to preserve this mask. So if I would come in and say, okay, I like what's going on with the sky, but maybe I don't want this, you know, I don't want the flowers selected here. And I could simply paint and kind of clean that up. But if I'm not super precise, you know, I could adjust what's what's going on in the sky. So I like to preserve these masks, either from color range or luminosity mask, because, you know, it's a it's a perfect selection based on what's going on in your image. And there's no way I could manually use the, the brush tool in Photoshop to generate something like this. So I'm just going to leave this and I'm going to create this. Uh, I'm going to add this black layer mask and now what I'll do is let's choose opacity of 100 and let's choose white as our main color. And now I'll just paint this in just in the sky. And this is revealing that bottom layer so I'm again this layer mask with this curves adjustment this is the mask we generated using the color range tool it's unaffected it's still preserved it still looks great. I'm just choosing to use this group and to have this you know, to, to only have this layer mask uh, and this curves adjustment show through to the sky. So that's kind of how I like to clean up these masks. If there's something that's going on that I don't like, like the flowers are being affected as well as the sky. So now if I do before and after, you can see just the sky, right? So that's just a quick run through of kind of how I like to use color range. Um, I'm using that sampled color option all the time. I find it just works great because I can click on a color, I can click on uh, a tonal range like highlights or shadows, and then I have the fuzziness and the range uh, sliders available to kind of fine tune that. So this is one of my favorite ways to make custom selections that I can use for masking. I find it's, you know, it works uh, seamlessly. I mean, it's really quick and in real time I can kind of see what's happening when I adjust those sliders. So check it out if you haven't already. I, I love using the color range selector. I think it was just this awesome tool that Photoshop uh, kind of brought in to the whole selection and masking interface. So check it out if you haven't. If you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But I hope you guys learned something and stay tuned for our next video. Thanks everyone. Take care.